Welcome back to the second part of um, the webinar on eco-design working plans. So now we're moving on to an overview of the working plans themselves. So there are four plans to discuss. Um, there was a transitional period from when the directive was first introduced in 2005 up to 2009 in principle. However, um, that has continued, um, work on, on products under the transitional period has continued and has run in parallel with the first and second working plans. Um, the reason for that is partly that there's been a step-by-step -step approach to covering those products. So for example, with motors, um, the first um, regulation covered up to 375 kilowatts and then the second one um, is looking up to a thousand kilowatts. So gradually there, there were gaps in the first round of regulations as it were in that coverage and they've been gradually being filled in. So it's not cut and dried that one working plan stopped and the next one beginning. I suppose that's partly what I'm going to say. Um, you will see that the first working plan worked nicely to time. It was adopted in 2008 before it could start in 2009. And the second working plan was the first to include these energy related products after the recast of the overall framework directive. Um, that ran a little bit behind and wasn't adopted until December 2012. Um, not surprisingly, perhaps the third working plan is also running behind. Um, the draft study report came out October last year, um, but has not been put to the consultation forum yet, um, so that we're a bit behind on that. However, there's still lots of products that are still in process under the transitional first and second working plan, so in some ways that's not a problem. It's not holding up um, work happening on this directive. So looking at this transitional period, um, so in the framework directive in 2005, a number of priority products were identified um, based on the climate change program um, and they are listed here. They are largely not completely domestic. Um, mostly there had been product groups that had already um, been regulated in some way in the EU um, under energy labels, under the voluntary eco labels. Um, some of them under industry voluntary agreements, um, for example, the white goods, the um, uh, washing machines and so on have been covered under, under CSED, the trade association. Um, in some member states, financial incentives had been used to encourage the uptake of efficient products um, or had been introduced via building regulations. So there was a good understanding, a reasonable understanding of the impact of these products um, and as some degree of information already available and it was known that there was substantial impact from these um, and scope for improvement so it was appropriate to look into them in more detail. As that was proved when um, in October 2008, this is a list of the estimated savings from the regulations that had been adopted at that point. Um, you can see you've got quite a number of regulations. Um, one horizontal standby. Again, they're mostly um, domestic impact, but you have tertiary sector lighting in there. So that's things like street lighting, lighting in offices and um, factories and so on. Uh, motors is clearly an important one that affects lots and lots of different products and there's a big industry impact and also has a huge potential savings. Um, and altogether at that point you had um, what was then thought to be about 12% of the EU's electricity consumption so that's a lot of um, a lot of energy saved. You can see there's there's quite a range of savings from you know just two terawatt hours from dishwashers up to the motors winning at 135. Um, 
and 13 product groups altogether regulated and things more um, savings have attributed from there which I'll talk about um, later on. So as things stand now um, in the middle of 2015 we've got um, a lot, we've had a lot of activity, we've got a lot more regulations now than we had in 2008, um, some of which are amendments. I'm not going to go into all of them here, there are far too many of them. Um, in terms of the sort of count of how many regulations, that's mildly complicated because um, it depends whether you count individual amendments or revisions and um, there are also, as I said earlier, alongside the eco-design regulations for some products, there are energy labelling regulations. So I haven't included them here, but um, they are obviously relevant. Um, we've got two voluntary agreements. Um, and beyond that, so this, this I, I suppose we've still got work going on. We've still got studies that haven't been discussed at regulatory committee, haven't been adopted. Um, there's still products that have gone, had some kind of preparatory study that were in that transitional plan that um, are still works in progress. Um, another thing to note is that individual products are sometimes moved between um, sort of categories in terms of regulation. They started off somewhere it was discovered that actually they fit better with some other products and they would be moved. So it's quite a complicated picture and it is, I admit, quite difficult to keep track of. Um, I'm going to give a list of um, web resources at the end which I suggest you use to keep track of what's happening. So moving on to the first working plan, um, it was a study undertaken by EPTA, a Greek organization, um, published back in 2007. They looked at um, 57 product groups in terms of this funnel of the numbers getting reduced and ended up with 25 A ranked and 9 B ranked. Um, the commission then reduced that number and in discussion and process of talking to the consultation forum, what has was adopted was 10 product groups. Um, so some, as I was talking about, some categories, some products got moved into categories and some categories got changed from the working study. Um, and it wasn't simply that the primary energy savings dictated which products were adopted in the working plan. It was more subtle than that. Um, you can see we've got quite a range. Again, we've got a number of domestic products in there. Um, sound and imaging equipment, for example, but there are more um, industrial and commercial products in there than the transitional plan. So what's happened so far? Um, some products have um, completed. We've got five eco-design regulations which are listed here, uh, the domestic and commercial ovens, uh, transformers and so on. Um, now I just want to point out that sometimes these products are considered in the, in the um, working plan and go forward to a proprietary study, but it's not always found that it's sensible to regulate or feasible to regulate. Um, we particularly we we'll talk about um, coffee machines. It was found that most of the life cycle impact was actually in the coffee itself, not in the brewing, um, and that was considered too far from scope for thinking about the actual coffee machine. So there was a regulation, um, but it only controls the standby power when the product is off, and when the machine switches to the standby mode, for example. Um, so there is one, also one voluntary agreement live, um, which is on games consoles. So 
one of the things that the preparatory study considers is whether a re regulation is more appropriate or a voluntary agreement. And um, in the case of games consoles, it was the latter. So in addition to those that have completed, um, there are some others still sort of in progress, um, which are listed here. Some of them seem to have stalled at um, a relatively early uh, point in the proceedings. So for example, untouchable power supplies, it's not clear whether there is going to be regulation now. Um, and one product group, there seems to have not been any action. Um, so I don't know quite what's going on with that. So moving on to the second working plan. Um, so it was completed in December, so working plans, and the working plan study was completed in December 2011. Um, it was the first one, as I said before, to include energy related products. So the scope in terms of coverage was potentially much greater. Um, it started off with 800 products and then focused down onto 36 in more detail. Um, so you've got the A, B and C. And of these, um, the working plan itself, which was actually adopted in the end of 2012, um, had seven high priority products of which one, the window products, is now energy related rather than energy using itself. And five, which were more um, lower priority and more um, yeah, more needed looking into a bit more before anything was decided. So, um, and you can see that this was running very late and that's partly because there were a lot of products already in the system from the transitional period and for the first um, working plan. So what, how far have we got with those? Um, none of the product groups have gone to consultation forum yet. There aren't any draft regulations as far as I know. Um, this isn't surprising because the first of the proprietary studies finished only in December 2014. So it was still working way through, if you remember, um, average of 52 months to actually having a regulation. So that's not um, surprising. Um, some of the ones, particularly in the um, less uncertain category of that working plan, haven't um, they don't seem to have made any progress, such as the displacement pumps and the heating controls. Um, I just want to comment that, you know, like I say, it is quite difficult to tell with some of these products just what's happening. And um, it's because there are so many products in so many different phases, it is quite difficult to keep track of what's going on. So I might have missed something, in which case I apologize. Um, so moving on to the third working plan. Um, we have the draft working plan study, which came out October of last year. Um, that identified, looked at 16 product groups in detail and ranked them against criteria, but the final step of the overall ranking still hasn't been published. Um, they are lift, listed here. Um, it's quite a diverse group of products. Um, and some of them are specifically sort of highlighted as being looking at overlaps with existing regulation. So for example, um, lifts needs to look at existing buildings regulations under the Energy Efficiency Directive or um, Energy Performance Buildings Directive. So that's the important aspect of it. Um, you may be surprised to see mobile phones on the list. Um, and that's quite an interesting one. There were one of the aspects of phones is their charges, but they have already been considered under separate regulation, so that's covered. And the phones themselves are um, the manufacturers are, are motivated to make them as efficient as possible because that extends the battery life, the time between charging. So, um, so you might say, well, what are 
what what is the point of looking at them in more detail under the eco design directive and the answer is we're looking more broadly than just the energy in use um, and they considered say for example easy access of getting the battery out of the product and uh, the mobile phone at the end of life um, being able to retrieve and erase personal data so when the product is is at the end of its life you don't have to worry about that um, replaceability and repairability of the battery at uh, at low cost so that will improve the the lifetime of the product um, and the importance of um, software updates or, or systems that the product still works but the software um, won't update so you have basically have to buy a new product because of that so there are different aspects of this we're starting to get out of the energy and use um, aspect into different elements for some products um, into quite interesting territory um, so as you can see we are not yet finished with this we haven't got a proposal from the Commission um, and that hasn't been considered by the consultation forum. So I said um, I want to talk about existing reviews of existing eco-design regulations because um, in the regulations they all have review dates um, built into them. The technology keeps changing so you want to see if there's scope for further changes. Also you want to check if the coverage or any aspect of the regulation has provided um, unintentional loopholes or unintended consequences. Um, so you want to look at existing regulations as well as looking for regulations for products that haven't been covered yet. Um, the degree of review will vary depending on the individual product. Sometimes it'll be a full sort of preparatory study using the full methodology. Um, sometimes it may just be on one particular aspect such as the scope. Um, so there are several that are active at the moment. Um, lighting is now being considered all as one product area rather than separately which was what happened previously between domestic and tertiary got washing machines, dishwashers and refrigerators and freezers. Um, there's some others which are have been had a quick look at as it were with just scheduled a review. Um, simple set top boxes, um, external power supply units and water pumps which has decided that they don't need to be um, reviewed in full. There isn't enough to make it worthwhile at the moment. Um, but there is still scope that sort of initial looks at this have found that there is still um, scope for considerable extra savings, energy savings from looking at these regulations. Um, and there's still some product groups within the overall coverage of the, of the transitional plan which still can be added in. So there's still plenty going on. So I said um, that information changes all the time. You can see with all those different products. Um, and here are some of the sources of information where you can keep up to date on what's happening. Um, the DG Energy is hopefully self-explanatory. They're one of the lead DGs on this. Um, the old DG Enterprise one is there because it has archive information on the working plan so if you want to look back at the previous working plans that's the place to go. Uh, DG Growth is now the current website for um, that directorate and has excellent information. Um, then we get on to um, NGOs who provide some very good helpful supplementary information in these areas. Um, ECEEE the link there is for the working plan but there's also a lot of information about individual product groups and the form and regulation. Um, cool Products is um, an environmental group of environmental NGOs 
um, and they give a good overview. And then um, Ucapol provide information for um, the EU NGO network, and um, that link, final link, is in there. That's all the others are in English, only the last final one is in English and German. So that's it. I hope that gives you um, a good overview and helps you feel like you've got a grasp of the basics. And we'll feel from there. If you want to find more information, you know where to find it. Thank you.